On the subject of Thanksgiving, the subject of Thanksgiving, specifically <clears throat> Thanksgiving in the Bible. I want you to look with me here at Psalm chapter number 100, verse number 4. Psalm 100, verse number 4 says this, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless him. His name. Now, the word Thanksgiving, just a very simple uh, you know, definition of the word Thanksgiving, is an act of giving thanks to someone for the supplying of a need. The act of giving thanks to someone or to another person for the supplying of a need. A, syn a synonym, a word that is synonymous with the word Thanksgiving, would be the word grateful, you know, to show gratitude or to be grateful. Now, here, Everyone, of course, uh, that is in this room, probably pretty much every time you hear the word Thanksgiving, you think of the holiday Thanksgiving that we celebrate. You know, and, and our version of Thanksgiving is, is celebrated in two places, United States and Canada. And I believe you guys celebrate it in October, correct? Yeah. What is it, October 17th? Or? It's like the second Monday. Okay, so it's the same way. It's, it's a week and a day. Okay. Yeah, so it's just in the two places. It's in New North America. It is in uh, Canada. And it is in the United States of America where we celebrate the holiday of Thanksgiving. Where this day is set apart uh, to where we are supposed to give thanks. And I'm going to get into the history at the very end of, uh, you know, the holiday of Thanksgiving. What the real and true history of that is. But I want to begin with this. Uh, the idea of Thanksgiving of the idea of Thanksgiving that we have in our holiday originated in the Bible and it originated from the Bible. And I'm going to show you that once I get into the history as I said. But I want to start with the Bible as our authority today and the way in which we as Christians are to be thankful. And I'm going to give you a few points, a few principles of how to be thankful, ways in your area that you can... Or way, it, uh, excuse me, different areas of life and ways in which you can be thankful. I want you to look at Psalm chapter number 100, verse number 4 with me one more time. Notice the Bible says this, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Now the very first point that I want to make this evening is when a person is being thankful to another, really what they are doing is praising that person. Especially in the sense of being thankful to God, giving thanksgiving to God. We are praising God. We are blessing God. Notice what it says there at the very end. So it says this, be thankful unto him, and then it says, and bless his name. I want you to go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, verse number 15. 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, verse number 15. Being thankful is, is giving praise to God. We are being thankful to God or giving thanks to God. We are praising God. We are glorifying God is what we are doing. We are giving Him glory for what He has given to us. We are showing thanks to Him. I want you to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 15, there where you turned. It says this, For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might, uh, I'm sorry, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many, notice this, redound to the glory of God. So notice there that the thanksgiving, what is it doing? It is redounding to the glory of God. So when you're returning that thanks, what are you doing? You are giving glory to God. So when we are thanking God for something, what we are doing is praising Him and glorifying Him for what He has given us. We are giving back thanks to Him for what He has given to us because we are thankful to Him. We are praising Him for what He has given to us. I want you to turn over in 2 Corinthians to chapter number 9 now. Chapter number 9, verse number 12. And as the uh, modern day definition that I read to you just a moment ago said, that it is for supplying a need, that is what the Bible teaches exactly. That when you give thanks to someone, it is because they obviously have done something for you or they have supplied a need. Normally it's, it's, it is something that is necessary. It was something that you actually needed and they were able to come through for you. I want you to look at 2 Corinthians chapter number 9, verse number 12. It says this, For the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints. Now the word want in the Bible is talking about something you lack and it's usually referring to something that you need, something that is necessary. And in this case it is. It's something that is necessary or needed. So it says it supplieth the want or need of the saints but is abundant also by many thanksgivings 
unto God. So when we are giving thanks to God, it is because He supplies the things that we need and we are returning what to Him? Glory to Him or praise to Him through thanksgiving. By telling Him that we are thankful, we are grateful for what He has given us. And a point to build upon that, that we always need to keep into our mind in every area of life of what we possess, is that we don't really deserve anything. We deserve to die and to go to hell. We don't deserve anything. You know, we, you know obviously we didn't exist before God. We can, could have never given God something to where He would have owed us anything. So anything that He gives to us, it's not that He owes it, it's because He's gracious to us. It's just because He allows us to have it. So that in and of itself, anything that you ever possess, you ever gain, whether it be even by your own strength, because God gives you the strength to do it, in whatever way, ultimately the thanks needs to be given to God. So when God comes through for us, when He supplies a need for us, we would be grateful back to Him and glorify and praise Him by giving thanks, by giving thanks to God. What causes someone, point number three, what causes someone to give thanks? I want you to look at 2 Corinthians again. Look at verse, or chapter number 9. We're right there. Look at verse number 11. It says this, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11. Being enriched, so, you know, uh, uh, being given many things, abundant things, right? That's what that means to be enriched, to be made rich. In everything to all bountifulness. So, we're abounding. Notice this. Which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. I want you to notice that the great blessings that God has bestowed upon us is what should provoke an internal gratefulness. That is the reason why someone is, should be thankful to God is because internally they are grateful to God for what God has given to them. Go to Leviticus chapter number 22. Leviticus chapter number 22 verse number 29. Being thankful to God is voluntary. Being grateful for something, that is obviously voluntary. That is a way in which you feel. And what provokes this feeling is the fact that God has supplied your needs. And in a, in a response, the person with the right heart, the way in which they would respond is that they are grateful to God for giving them what He has given them. They are thankful for what God has supplied them with or given them in their time of need. And Thanksgiving is something that is voluntary. It is a response that we should have, but God obviously does not mandate this. God does not force us. It is voluntary. There's actually a sacrifice of the Old Testament, a sacrifice that they would do of a lamb in the Old Testament, and it is it is uh, falls under the category of those which were the free will offerings. You know, there were the forced offerings, the mandated offerings, the tithe and such, but then there was also the free will offerings, and one of the free will offerings was the offering of thanksgiving. And the purpose of this offering was that you were grateful. You were happy for what God has given you. You were thankful for what God has given you. And in return to that, you wanted to show your gratefulness. You wanted to show your, you know, how thankful you were, your thankfulness. And what you did was you, out of your abundance and what you had, you would take one of your possessions, which would, as I said, be a lamb, and you would take that down there and sacrifice that on the altar, have a priest sacrifice that for you to demonstrate how thankful you were. That you were willing to sacrifice something, you know, that is a part of your riches. At that time, of course, you know, uh, that was their food source. That was very important to them. They got milk, you know, from their, uh, their goats at that time. And they would take goats at some point. Uh, you know, they would sacrifice all different types of things. So different types of sacrifices, that was a big deal to them. That was a part of their welfare. That was a part of their livestock. And they were willing to sacrifice that to show their thankfulness to God. Look at Leviticus chapter 22, verse number 29. It says this, And when ye will offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving unto the Lord, notice this, offer it at your own will. So notice that. If you're going to offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving, how are you going to offer it? You are going to offer it at your own will. And that goes for any area or any way in which you are thankful. In order for someone to be thankful, it has to be of their own will. That is the essence of what it means to be 
thankful. It is actually something that comes from the heart. It is you being sincere. You cannot force someone to be thankful for something, can you? You can treat someone great. You can do everything that you wanted to do to someone to try to cause them to be thankful, but you can't force them to be thankful, can you? It has to be what? It has to come from your own will. That's why when God has the free will offerings, what does he say? It needs to come from your own will. You know, I'm not going to force you to do this. I'm not going to force you to bring down your offering or to sacrifice these. You know, as I said, they had their mandated offerings. But we have these free will offerings. You know, there's the peace offering, a few other ones, uh, the free will offering actually, and then the thanksgiving offering. And he didn't force any of them. It was at their own will. Why? Because God, <clears throat> excuse me, God wanted them to actually show their thankfulness. God wanted to see that they were thankful to him. And what would they do? They would give thanks in that way. I'm going to give you four ways now. Tonight's sermon is going to be fairly short. And uh, uh, at the end of it, like I said, I want to give the uh, history of Thanksgiving, the true history of Thanksgiving. I'm going to give you four ways in your life, a practical application in which you can show Thanksgiving to God. Number one is a sacrifice of your works. Now, the sacrifices of the Old Testament were very clearly their works, the works of the law. You know, we're told that repeatedly, right? And they would take down that what? That, that offering. They would take down that uh, ram or whatever it may have been, and they would offer the firstborn. And what was it? It was their works. And that was a way in which that they would show that they were thankful to God. And I want you to turn with me to Psalm chapter number 50, verse number 14. And this is a way that we can show that we are thankful to God by our works. We can show God that we are thankful for things that He has done for us. And we can, on our part, sacrifice our time, sacrifice our resources to demonstrate our thankfulness to God and to show thanksgiving to God. Again, uh, Leviticus 22, 29, where you were, said this, And when you will offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving unto the Lord, offer it at your own will. Psalm chapter number 50, verse number 14 says this, Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. Go to Amos chapter number 4. Amos chapter number 4, we'll see this again, the sacrifice of thanksgiving. This would be a sacrifice of our works. <clears throat> We should daily be looking for areas of life. We have so many things to be thankful for. And we should year-round be thankful to God. Yeah. It's good to have times like this where it causes us to reflect upon ourselves and causes us to reflect upon all you know, the bounty that God has bestowed upon us and cause us to be thankful. But we should attempt to be thankful to God year-round. We should be attempt to be thankful to God all of the time. And one way in which we can show God our thankfulness, we can demonstrate that through our works, sacrifice through our works. Look at Amos chapter number 4, verse number 5. It says this, And offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving with leaven, and proclaim and publish the free offerings. It's like the free will offerings. For this liketh you, O ye children of Israel, saith the Lord God. So number one, a way in your life that you can show God that you are thankful is to sacrifice by your works works, to spend a, bit, a little bit more time doing the works of God. Spend a little bit more time maybe going soul winning. Spend a little bit more time reading your Bible. Spend a little bit more time praying. And you say, how can I do that? Well, you probably in your life have a certain amount of Bible reading that you do a day, right? Most people here have a system that they have set up, right? Well, if we look at the, the sacrifices of the Old Testament, they, there was a system set up and there was a certain amount that they were to bring in a certain time when they were supposed to do that, right? Well, a way you could show maybe your thanksgiving to God is maybe read a little bit more extra Bible every once in a while. Maybe set out a time. This is your free will offering. Set out a time and maybe what you can do is pray a little bit more often. Pray to God a little bit more and give Him thanks through your prayer. You know what else you could do? A sacrifice of thanksgiving? Maybe go soul winning a little bit more often. Maybe try to find areas in your lacking is where you're lacking as well and try to find a way in which you can pay God back and, and you could you know, uh, 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 you know, offer on the altar a sacrifice of thanksgiving to the Lord of your own works to demonstrate your thanksgiving. God recommended the free will offering, but he didn't force it. But why did he recommend it? Why did he even suggest it? Because he wanted them to do it. God took pleasure in the free will offering. God took pleasure in the offering of thanksgiving. And in your life, if you were to offer of your works as well, 
a thanksgiving offering, a little bit further, to go a little bit further, a free will offering, God would take pleasure in that as well. Find an area where you can maybe here and there go a little further and show your thanksgiving to God with your works. Point number two is we can uh, uh, offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving through praise. This is through our voice. Go to Jonah chapter number two, verse number nine. With our words, we can, we can thank God with our words. <clears throat> it says this, <clears throat> the book of Jonah, Jonah chapter number 2, verse number 9, But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. So notice there that Jonah says that he is going to sacrifice. And specifically what he sacrifices is the voice of thanksgiving. He's giving thanks unto the Lord. Go to Psalm chapter number 26, verse number 7. Psalm chapter number 26, verse number 7. I'm going to read to you from Psalm 107, verse 22. The Bible says this, And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. So notice that that sacrifice is what? It's a sacrifice of your voice. It's a sacrifice of your words. And what are you doing? You're declaring his works with rejoicing. That is praising him. Like I said, what, is it, what does it mean to, to give thanks or thanksgiving to God? It is to praise him or it is to bless him or glorify him. There it says to declare his works with rejoicing. Psalm 26, 7 where you are says this, that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous works. So David is talking about praying to God and with his voice, with his words, thanking God for all of the greatness that he has bestowed upon him in his life. All the many things and blessings that God had given to David in his life. He was thanking the Lord for those. Look at Psalm chapter number 116. Psalm chapter number 116, verse number 17. <clears throat> It says this, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. So what is he talking about there? Praying to the Lord again. He's talking about praying to God and offering the sacrifice of thanksgiving. That is with his voice or with his words, he is praising or glorifying God for everything that he has done for us. That's a way that we can show our thankfulness to God. That's a way that David showed thanksgiving to God, wasn't it? By his voice or by his words, the voice of thanksgiving is the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Now, number three, this is specifically, very specific, one verse through prayer. It's pretty much uh, right in line with the same thing. Go to Philippians chapter number four, verse number six. Now, this is very specific when we're making requests unto God or we are making petitions unto God while we are praying, specifically as we saw there in Psalm 116, verse 17, we can give thanksgiving unto God Himself. If you would have noticed there, you know, uh, David was first talking about publishing with the voice of thanksgiving all the wondrous works of God. Now that doesn't have to be to God Himself in prayer. That can be just as I'm doing right now, preaching about the greatness of God to you. Or telling others or telling your family or telling people at work about, you know, the great things that God has done for you in your life. Right? So that's one way. Right? In that way. Uh, and I don't know if you noticed this, but it also said it in, in uh, 107, 22, and let them sacrifice the sacrificing of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. That's not necessarily to God. That's them, you know, uh, maybe among the congregation just praising God to another person, talking about the greatness that God has done for you. I'll give you a practical application. You know, a lot of people, it seems, would be ashamed to do this, but if God does something great for you in your life, you should tell somebody about that and praise and glorify God to another person. You know what you're doing? You're giving thanks to God for what He's done for you. You are telling that person, you are telling God, obviously He sees and hears all things, that you're thankful for what God has done for you. And God desires that. That's why we have this in Scripture. That's why God implemented the thanksgiving offering. He wants to be told, that He wants us to tell Him that we are thankful for what He has done for us. Here's a specific example of prayer though. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. I wanted to have some New Testament verses on this. It says this, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So notice in your prayer, something you should be doing routinely or regularly is what? 
giving thanksgiving to God. Not just this time of year, always. When you are praying to ask God for something, why don't you take a second and thank Him for what He just answered? For maybe a prayer that He just answered if you're going to ask Him for something else. We need to you know, be thankful to God for the things that He does for us in our lives. There are times when I am 100% sure. You know, sometimes you wonder, you know, did God actually reach out and, and, and you know, intervene and answer that prayer? But I'm sure that you feel the same way. There are times in my life where I know for a fact when I prayed to God that he was the one that intervened and that he himself made sure that he answered that petition or he answered that prayer. I know that that has happened in my life. You know what we need to do when you're sure about that? You need to thank him for it. You need to say, God, thank you for answering this prayer. Be thankful that you have a God that hears your words and hears your prayers and loves you enough and he's able to you know, uh, intervene in an hour of lives. Now, what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him? We need to be thankful and understand our humble estate and that the Lord of Lords is willing to intervene in my you know, uh, humble life and to, and to answer prayers in our lives. We need to be thankful when we know that God uh, answers. Another way is this. Number four, this is the last point, giving thanksgiving through song. To give thanksgiving through song. Go to Psalm chapter number 95, verse number 2. A lot of these are in the book of Psalms. Psalm chapter number 95, verse number 2. <clears throat> Psalm chapter number 95, verse number 2 says this, Let us come before His presence with thanksgiving, and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. So notice there that a way in which we can give thanksgiving to God is through psalms, right? It was a, what is a psalm? It is, it is a song, isn't it? It's singing a song. You know, a way that we can be thankful to God is by praising him for what he's done for us through song. But remember, it has to be of your own will. If you're just sitting there and you're just going through the motions and just singing and not actually being thankful from the heart, it doesn't mean anything. You actually need to think about things that God has done for you and be thankful through song. You know, there are times, and you, and you say, give me an example, right? When, when you're singing songs, you don't oftentimes, you know, uh, certain words or it'll, it'll uh, you know, strike a, 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 you know, a, a note with you or a string with you when it talks about salvation and it hits home. And you start being thankful all of a sudden for your salvation while you're singing. Sometimes you sit there and we're humans and you're kind of singing like a robot, right? You're just kind of singing the song that you've sung 50 times. But then sometimes you'll sing a certain verse and it hits home, doesn't it? Sometimes you'll sing a certain verse maybe about the blood of Jesus or about how he saved you and you can tell that it's personal to the author and all of a sudden it becomes personal to you, doesn't it? And you start becoming what? thankful for your salvation. I do this all the time while we're singing. You know, at least one time a week, I can tell that, you know, uh, when we sing a verse, it just hits home with me, and I feel thankful for my salvation. When we sing, we need to use these songs as a way to praise and glorify God. You know what we should do? A lot of times, you know what those hymns are, are sung about, all the hymns in those hymnal? They're sung about, they're sung from men, from the perspective of men that are thankful for what God has done for them in their life. That's the reason why they wrote the hymn is because they're thankful and they'll actually give you an example of something God has done for them in their life. And they're thankful for what? Sometimes salvation. Sometimes maybe how God has helped them in their personal lives. When we sing those songs, we need to use them as an opportunity to give thanks to God. To give thanks to the Lord and what He has done for us. So uh, turn, turn now over to Psalm chapter number 147, verse number 7. We'll look at a couple more of these. Psalm chapter number 147, verse number 7. Don't allow this, you know, these, these examples just to go in one ear and out the other. Implement these in your life. Put these into your life and be thankful to God for what He has done for you. Use these exact examples. You know, these are not just points that I came up with. I looked up the word thanksgiving and I, I, I wanted to look up ways in which people were giving thanks to God. And I extracted, hey, here's examples where they're giving thanks through song. Here's examples where they're giving thanks through their works. Here's examples where they're giving thanks to other people. Here's examples where they're giving thanks through prayer. These are examples through Scripture the way that men give thanks to God. These, you know, everything in the Bible, it's, it's written for examples to us, the way in which we should live our lives. So look at these godly men, you look at the, the book of Psalms, and see how a man after God's own heart gave thanks to God. And he tells us, you know, this is the way to give thanks to God. These are examples that we should follow. We should use all of these as examples. Psalm chapter number 147, verse number 7 says this, Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. 
Sing praise upon the harp unto our God. So notice again, thanksgiving is what? It's praise. It's glorifying God. It's giving thanks to God for what He's done, and they're doing it through song. Look at uh, Psalm chapter number 51, verse number 3. Psalm, oh, I'm sorry, Isaiah. This is Isaiah, actually. Isaiah chapter number 51, verse 3. I'm going to read to you from Psalm chapter number 69, verse number 30. It says this, I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify Him with thanksgiving. Notice, praise, magnify, thanksgiving. It's a way to glorify God, to be thankful for what He's done for us. So we'll praise the name of God. We can be thankful to God. Be thankful for the name of Jesus. I'm thankful for the name of Jesus, that Jehovah saves, that God came and died for me and saved me. Once you look at Isaiah 51, chapter 51, verse 3, it says this, For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. He will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of the Lord. So speaking about the reformation of the world that's going to take place. The restoration specifically. Joy and gladness shall be found therein. Now notice the result of the joy and gladness. Thanksgiving and the voice of of melody. So notice that there is God does something great for them. He comforts them when they are in a time of need. They are in a place of waste, waste places. God restores it. God brings salvation to them. And then as a result of that, they have joy and gladness. And then as a result of their joy and gladness, what do they do? They show thanks to God. They tell God that they are thankful for what He has done for them. And how do they do it? It says, and the voice of melody. They do it through song. That's a way that we can be thankful to God. When you sing the hymns, be thankful for what you're singing. Be thankful for what God has done for you. So that's what it is to be thankful. An overall definition is to praise God or to glorify God. Now here in the conclusion, I want to give you the history of Thanksgiving. And uh, I'm sure, you know, um, I'm sure what you were taught in public school is, is definitely not the true history of Thanksgiving. It's 100% not the true his history of Thanksgiving unless you, you know, went to maybe a, a uh, a private school that maybe you were taught something different or, or possibly you know uh, your teacher you know taught something other than the public school curriculum but I know that what I was taught in public school was not the true history of Thanksgiving. Now, the 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 um, you know standard view of Thanksgiving is you know of course the pilgrims came over right, and I'm going to kind of go into detail and tell the story of what really took place, uh, and then I'm going to I'm going to read from the document and everything in just a moment. But uh, the pilgrims came over; they traveled to the you know North America area and landed in what we now call the United States of America, and uh, you know they were on hard times. Times. There were famines and stuff, pestilences, and many of them were dying. They met up with the Native Americans. They met up with the Indians. And the Indians taught them how to, I mean, it goes so far as they say hunt and fish, like these guys came over here and didn't know how to hunt and fish. I mean, come on. It's ridiculous when you stop and think about it. You know, they just show up and they're like, how are we going to find food? It's ridiculous. So uh, they taught them how to hunt and fish, and they showed them how to grow, you know, uh, uh, what we call Indian, what was called at that time Indian corn. Now we just call it corn because it's the only thing that we call corn, but it was Indian corn, right? Uh, what we call corn today. And then they were so thankful to the Indians that they invited the Indians or the Native Americans to a feast, right? And they showed their thanks to the Native Americans, what people will say oftentimes in this feast, right? Raise your hand if that's what you were taught in public school. Is that what pretty much everybody was taught in public school? That is, that is not. And that feast is what they refer to as the Feast of Thanksgiving. That is not the correct history of Thanksgiving at all. It is not you know, our nation's true origin of what we celebrate today, the holiday of Thanksgiving. Now, um, the, the same people... Uh, were involved in the true Thanksgiving. The same people. And, and everyone here is probably familiar with who William Bradford is. It's a very famous name, right? He, was the, he ended up being the governor of the Plymouth Colony. So what happened was this. It's an extremely interesting story. So you know that, uh, you know, 
I, I'm, I'll tell you one thing I'm thankful for is the King James Bible. But I don't know if you know this, but King James himself was uh, a, a bit of a tyrant or a bit of a dictator. He, and he did, uh, if you actually read history about King James, he persecuted those that did not believe. He actually persecuted Anabaptists, people that believe like we believe. You know, uh, King James didn't translate this book himself in the first place. So when people attack the character of King James, that's water off a duck's back to me. I don't give a crap what kind of guy he was. It doesn't matter to me. Right? But, you know, God used Nebuchadnezzar. Even if he did translate it, God used Nebuchadnezzar and he was a wicked man, so that doesn't mean anything. But King James persecuted, heavily persecuted people that did not believe like him. The Anabaptists, he killed the Anabaptists. He would put them to death in horrible types of torture. He even persecuted uh, those of the Church of England, and he was the head of the Church of England. And uh, uh, these people became known of two of the groups that kind of protested the church but wanted to stay somewhat within the church as the pure. Puritans and the Separatists. Now, the Puritans were those that still believed in the Church of England, but they wanted to purify the church. They wanted to fix the problems. The Separatists were those that were like, you guys are too gone. We're going to separate ourselves from you. So that's where they get those names, the Puritans and the Separatists. These people were a group of Puritans. And uh, William Bradford was of this group. Um, uh, the, uh, the reverend's name was John something. I can't remember his name right now, his last name. But he, you know, he ended up being the, the pastor of the first church there in Plym the uh, Plymouth Colony. They ended up uh, being persecuted heavily by King James. They, were try they went and had a meeting with King James, and King James basically told them that, you know, uh, we're going to harry you if you don't, you know, get out of here. And that's, you know, if you don't, you know, stop coming to us. And that means, like, to kick them out of the land, right? And to drive them off. Well... That ended up happening. He, they kept coming to King James and trying to get him to, to, to fix the problems that they thought that the church had. And uh, King James ended up basically just driving them, just excommunicating them from England. So they moved to an area that was, it was a city within Holland that was more of a liberal area as far as they just allowed people to worship God in that sense, allowed them to do what they wanted to do. And while they were there, they, they got a hold of a printing press. They got somebody that would print uh, you know, literature. And they started printing all this literature of all the problems that the Church of England had and had someone go and ship it over to England. And they were passing out this paperwork. Well, King James found out about it. And then he sent over an ambassador to tell you know, uh, there the, the uh, uh, authorities in Holland about it. And they threw him in jail. Well, they ended up letting him out of jail and uh, basically, they, they stopped trying to protest the church at this point. And they kind of started focusing on themselves and on their own church that was there. And that caused them to realize that there were a lot of problems in Holland. And the reason why you know, they had all of their rights to be able to worship freely is because it was a very ungodly place. So they realized that it was having a bad effect on their children. And this was really supposedly the, the main reason why uh, they left was because they, they were seeing the, the bad effects from the city that they were living in on the next generation that they were raising in this city in Holland. Because it was not a godly place. There wasn't a church there. That's why they went there. That's why they were able to go there. So this is where in Holland where they decided that they were going to sail to the New World. They were going to go to the New World. It was a perfect opportunity for them to be secluded, for them to raise up a, you know, a godly family. And they wanted to plant you know, uh, this, this colony. They were going to be a part of. And their original plan was actually to sail to the New York area and, and to go to that colony. They ended up landing, and you guys are probably aware of this, they were riding. This is the part that I uh, was very familiar with, all of this part. Um, uh, you know, they, they were on the most famous uh, 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 ship. What is it? Some of the kids know. What's the, the Mayflower. They were riding the Mayflower. And they didn't land exactly where they were supposed to land. They actually landed over their Cape Cod area. They came around, you know, that little uh, peninsula and, and went in and, and ended up, you know, basically ended up founding uh, 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 Plymouth Colony over a time, a period of time. The first three years, they landed in 1620, were, was extremely, it really was extremely rough. The very first three years. While uh, William Bradford, who ended up being the governor, while he was away hunting for food and stuff like that, because they were still lodging on the ship for very much time. Uh, his wife ended up like falling off of the, the ship and she drowned to death in like ice cold water. So, and people, I think f it was like 50% attrition. Like 50% uh, of people ended up dying after three years. Like it was, it was horrific. They're building, you know, their homes and, and it was just terrible. They were, they, they, it was really bad famines was one of the worst things that they had was the famine and they could not 
get a break. This, everything else was going wrong and then they weren't even able to have a good food supply. Well, there was a point in 1623 uh, and right before harvest time where they realized like if we don't get more food, every last one of us are going to die. We're all, this is going to be the end of us because they, they were running out of the food supply. They had nothing and uh, they've been having run-ins with the Indians. And they, they realize that if, our, if we don't get some food from this harvest, coming soon, we're all going to die. Well, they had, that year, they had like, uh, you know, a huge surplus. Just like a, a massive amount of crops come in. They got, they were, it was, there was a long uh, drought. Uh, was one of the reasons why they were concerned about their food supply. It ended up, they ended up having a lot of rain at the last minute. And their harvest was bountiful. It was huge. It was plentiful. And I'm going to read to you, I'm going to read to you from, this is taken from William Bradford's um, uh, uh, diary. Uh, I believe it's the Plymouth Plantation is the name of it. And this is actually the very first proclamation of Thanksgiving. It had nothing to do with the Native Americans. It had nothing to do with the Indians. It had to do with giving thanks to God. The Thanksgiving was a thanksgiving to God. I'm going to read to you, as I said, from uh, uh, Governor Bradford. He was the governor at that time, and he proclaimed a day of thanksgiving to God in the Plymouth Colony. This is what it says. <clears throat> Inasmuch as the Great Father has given us this year an abundant harvest of Indian corn, wheat, peas, beans, squashes, and garden vegetables, and has made the forest to abound with game, and the sea with fish and clams, and inasmuch as he has protected us from the ravages of the savages, has spared us from pestilence and disease, has granted us freedom to worship God according to the dictates, dictates of our own conscience. Now notice that that definition of, of being thankful is actually perfectly in line with the Bible, isn't it? Now, you know, he actually used the word uh, abound one time. You know, It's because of the abundance that God gives you, it causes you to be thankful. The things that God gives you, it causes you to be thankful. He then says this in the following paragraph, Now I, your magistrate, he was the governor, do proclaim that all ye pilgrims with your wives and ye little ones do gather at ye meeting house on ye hill between the hours of 9 and 12 in the daytime. On Thursday, November the 29th of the year of our Lord, 1623. So that's 1623. And the year since ye pilgrims landed, oh, I'm sorry, uh, three, the third year since ye pilgrims landed, on ye pilgrim rock. And then he says this, There to listen to ye pastor, that's me, no, I'm just kidding, and render thanksgiving to ye almighty God for all his blessings. That is the true history in the United States of America of the holiday that we celebrate today of thanksgiving. On November 29th, Thursday, November 29th on Thursday, they were to gather together in their church and the whole purpose was to render thanksgiving unto God. And we're told, hey, it's to, so they were thankful to the uh, Native Americans. The public school system today wants to get rid of God. That's what it comes down to. The public school system today wants to eradicate God from its curriculum because it wants to eradicate God from culture and from the minds of children. But our nation was truly founded. Now, the founders of the nation, I understand that a lot of them were whacked out. You know, Benjamin Franklin had bodies in the basement. You know, all kinds of crazy stuff, right? You know, he, they're like Masons. They're Freemasons. You know, this isn't just conspiracy stuff. A lot of them were whack jobs. They were. But the people of this country originally... And, you know, the people of Canada... I'm not going to leave you out. The people that came over, the pilgrims, they really were... They really were godly men and women. Many of them were. And they came to worship God. They came to get away from persecution. And God was at the forefront of their minds. And our history in this nation often does lie upon a godly foundation. The first presidential proclamation for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving Day, 1789. This is the first time it's proclaimed by, of course, the first president by the President of the United States of America. 
Whereas it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits, and humbly to implore His protection and favor. And whereas both houses of Congress have by their joint committee requested me to recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many signal, signal favors of Almighty God, especially by affording them an opportunity peaceably to establish a form of government for their safety and happiness. There's a little bit more I'm going to read here. But notice, what did George Washington say that the purpose of this day was? To give thanks to God, wasn't it? That it was be, to be a day that was set aside to where we were to give thanks thanks to the Lord for everything that He has done for us. No Native Americans were mentioned. No Indians were mentioned. That's not, that wasn't at all. You know, I'm not trying to, you know, uh, down the Native Americans and the Indians. That has nothing to do with it. But that, it, the point is that they weren't involved with the Thanksgiving at all. They had nothing to do with it. You know, there, were, there was a, and I've read large portions of his diary, and there was a time where there was a dinner or a feast with the, with the Native Americans. Had nothing to do with Thanksgiving at all. Never mentioned the word Thanksgiving. It wasn't even within five pages, I don't think. It, you know, because it talks, because it was three years in between, so within ten or so pages, this took place in his book. Had nothing to do with it. So what's the reason why, why they do this? They just want to take, what's the reason of Thanksgiving? What does it mean to give thanks to God? To give glory and praise and honor to God. So what do they not want to take place? They don't want you to give praise and honor and glory to God. That's what they're trying to prevent. It says this, Now therefore I do recommend and assign Thursday, the 26th day of November, next to be devoted by the people of these states to the service of that great and glorious being, who is the benefic beneficent author, author of all the, good, all the good that was, goodness sakes, that is or that will be, that we may then all unite in rendering unto him our sincere and humble thanks for his kind care and protection of the people of this country previous to their becoming a nation, for the signal and manifold mercies and the favorable interpositions of his providence which we experienced in the course and conclusion of the late war for the great degree of tranquility, union, and plenty which we have since enjoyed for the peaceable and rational manner in which we have been enabled to establish constitutions of government for our safety and happiness and particularly the national one now lately instituted for the civil and religious liberty with which we are blessed and the means we have of acquiring and diffusing useful knowledge. And in general for all the great and various favors which he hath been pleased to confer upon us. I'm going to read the last paragraph. This is educational especially for all of the children to understand this. And also that we may then unite in most humbly offering our prayers and supplications to the great Lord and ruler of, of nations and beseech him to pardon our national and other transgressions. You think a president would speak like that today? You know, begging the, you know, the people to please pray that God might pardon our personal and national transgressions. Can you imagine Obama or Trump making such a statement? It really is laughable. It's ridiculous. <clears throat> uh, and then it says this, To enable us, whether in public or private stations, to perform our several and relative duties properly and punctually, to render our national government a blessing to all the people by constantly being a government of wise, just, and constitutional laws, discreetly and faithfully executing and obeyed, to protect and guide all sovereigns and nations, especially such as have shown kindness unto us, and to bless them with good government, peace, and concord, to promote the knowledge and practice of true religion and virtue and the increase of science among them and us, and generally to grant unto all mankind such a degree of temporal prosperity as he alone knows to be best. Given under my hand at the city of New York the third day of October in the year of our Lord, 1789, George Washington. That is the true and real history of Thanksgiving in the United States of America. And it did in fact originate 
from the idea of Thanksgiving in the Bible. That's where it came from. It came from the idea of being grateful and being thankful to God. And what do you do in return? You praise God, you honor Him, and you glorify Him. There should be a time set aside where we honor God, we glorify God for what He has done for us. And I think that Thanksgiving is a good thing. I'm not, you know, the Puritans were like, they were against all holidays. Now they'd be like turning, William Bradford would be turning over in his grave. I don't know if you know that, but that's one of the major things that they protested about the King of England was that they were like, we need to get rid of Christmas and Easter. They hated all holidays. And he started this day not to be a holiday. They went down to the church to pray and fast. And now we have a national holiday Thanksgiving. I'm sure he'd be extremely, you know, upset about that in his name. Thank you, William Bradford, right? Uh, you know, I, I think it's a good thing. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think it's a, good, it's a good thing that we set aside this day. And you know what it does? It can cause you to be thankful for what you've done. And I want to start a tradition here at Valiant Baptist Church where um, when we do our Thanksgiving dinner, you know, uh, uh, well, number one, we're going to do the Thanksgiving Fellowship Dinner every year. Let me say that. I want to do that every year here at Valiant Baptist Church. But also, this is more so what I was referring to. This is something that, that we did at my church when I grew up. And what they would do, and I wanna, I'm going to open up for all the heads of the, the, the homes or the houses, that's the men, to stand up and to tell the congregation of something that you are thankful for and something that God has done for you. This is something when I was growing up that my church did. And I think it's good to, to stand up and to you know, uh, proclaim to everyone here things that you are thankful for, things that God has done for you. And this is a way in which to put those uh, uh, practical um, applications that I spoke of into practice to actually you know, use that. Uh, where you can stand up in front of the congregation and you can tell people things that you are thankful for. So it's going to be totally voluntary. And if you don't feel like you don't want to do it, if maybe you feel uncomfortable and we're not going to you know, look down upon you, you're not pressured, all right? But uh, you know, if, you want, if you want to, you stand up and you tell us something that you're thankful about. You know, you tell everybody here and give thanks to God. So, you know, uh, anybody, you know, uh, that would like to do that? E either one. Brother Bops. I obviously want to, you know, I'm going to go ahead and get this one out of the way. I'm thankful for the King James Bible. Amen. But, but even more, well, not even more so than that. I am thankful for a roof over my head and the clothes that God's provided on me and my family's back. You know, what more could you ask for? So, Amen. I'm extremely thankful for that. Amen. Amen. Real Hall. You know, I'm just thankful for this church you know, and just the fact that everything we went through and just how we can all stick together and be a church family. I mean, Amen. You know, it's important to have a church and I mean, it's nice to have a place where you can come to and just get away from the world. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Brother Rick. Yeah, I just want to say I'm you know, thankful for uh, my wife. Uh, she's a virtuous woman, you know, and it's, it's very hard to come by these days. And I'm just uh, super thankful for my wife. And the uh, children that she's given us. Um, so I just want to thank um, God for giving me a virtuous wife to raise our children in the nurture and admonition. Amen. 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 Brother Anthony? Yeah, I'm thankful also uh, for my beautiful wife. She's a wonderful woman. Thankful for all my healthy children. Um, I'm thankful for you know being here with extended family, but also you know more important than that, all my brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. You're accountable, um, that are honest with you, people to look up to, people to you know to work hard with, and to love the Lord together. I'm thankful for that. Amen. And I'm just thankful for this church. I'm thankful that there's people that come to visit our church. You know, people still love us out there, man. <laughs> encourage us. I'm thankful for encouragement. Really? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I mean, you know, where do you begin in all the things you're thankful for, really? Seriously, I'm thankful for my family, for my wife, for all my kids. I'm thankful that I was, you know, born and raised in a, in a fundamental Baptist home with good doctrine. You know, I'm thankful that I had somebody to give me the gospel when I was young. You know, because a lot of people don't have that opportunity. You know, uh, I'm thankful that I live. I'm thankful for the United States. Hey, you know, we're going to hell in a handbasket. That ain't a joke. But we have a lot more freedoms than many other places in this earth. Right. You, know, we're, you know, I'm thankful that I have the freedom that I have. We have more freedom than those Puritans had when they escaped. You know what they did? They gave me what they didn't have at that time. Think about that for a minute. 
You know, I'm thankful for the freedom that we have here. I'm thankful for the King James Bible. I'm thankful for this church. The, you know, the great families that are here that stuck with us. Thankful for, you know, so many different things. I could go on and on and on. I'm thankful for my salvation. Thankful for Jesus Christ and all that He's done for me. You know, I could just keep going on. You know, just uh, on and on and on. I'm thankful for all of my family. You know, that I have a good, godly family. Uh, as far as, as you said, extended family. I'm thankful for immediate family. Just everything. Yeah. So many different things I'm thankful for. We're all thankful for you, Pastor. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Alrighty. Yes, sir. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, dear Lord, for everything you've done for us. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this church that we have, dear God. Help us to be a light here set on a hill that we can, uh, that we can reach many people, dear Lord. We, we ask you that you would uh, instill in us zeal. Uh, that you'd give us strength, dear Lord, to, to keep going on even in the hard times, dear God, in times of discouragement. We're thankful that we have a rock that we can always lean on. We ask you to be with us. Bless this food tonight. Help us to have a good time of fellowship, dear Lord. And just continue to bless our church. Be with those that are maybe having any kind of uh, uh, ailments or injuries or anything like that, dear God. We ask you, and we're, we're so thankful that the Harrison family stopped by here, dear God. Help us to uh, be hospitable to them and charitable to them. And we ask you that you would keep them safe in their travels and that uh, we hope that we've been a blessing to them while they were here. And we love you so much. And in Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen.